just imagine what would happen if your daughter was standing there and if your daughter was there what would you do how would you fight so you have to join hands you have to take each child as your daughter वहाँलाई त हामी पुरै जिन्दगी पनि सम्पर्क गरे पनि कहिले पनि के रे कमी हुँदैन उहाँले धेरै धेरै गर्नु भएको छ मेरो आमा त मलाई जन्म मात्रै दिएको बिजुले चाहिँ अहिले यत्रो गरिदिएको छ I want a society free of human trafficking. Uh, I I hope I will make it happen one day. These girls are most vulnerable now because now people will attack them. They can be attacked by any sort of sexual abuse. They might get raped, they might get trafficked, anything. But if I get more support, I will take as many in as possible. These are the words spoken by Anuradha Koirala, the 65-year-old Nepalese woman who has saved more than 50,000 lives of women that have been trafficked from Nepal to India. She formed a non-profit organization called Mighty Nepal with roots in Kathmandu in 1993 and since then continues to save many lives. Hello everyone. This is Nikki and welcome back to another episode of Women with Substance. So today I'm going to talk about one of the oldest humanitarian that we have and someone who makes our whole country so proud of her. This is Anuradha Koirala. So let's go back to her childhood, where she was born, how she was raised and where she got this devotion of social work from. She was born in April 14, 1949 in Nepal to parents Colonel Pratap Singh Gurung and Lakshmi Gurung. And then she went to India in a hill station to study at St. Joseph Covenant School. And that is where she got the inspiration by her mothers and sisters to help people and to go into social work and to rescue lives. And then she devoted her entire life to this cause. Please close your eyes and take every child as your own daughter soon you will feel their sorrow and then you will feel the strength that comes out of you to protect them human trafficking is a crime heinous crime a shame to humanity i ask everyone to join me to create a society free of trafficking we need to do this for all our daughters So people often wonder why someone with such good upbringing, someone who had a luxurious life for that time, why did she decide to go and help out women that have been trafficked? How did she get from living a luxurious life to seeing this horrific crime that's been going on in our world? Well, this happened when she got married. Instead of having a blissful marriage, she was abused. She was beaten by her husband. And at this time in Nepal it was a norm for women to get beaten by their husband it was nothing out of the ordinary however she was out of ordinary and she decided to do something about it so she got out of the marriage and then she devoted her life to helping other women come out of abuse themselves let's join hands and make this world a trafficking free world a better place for children take your daughter as your pride men learn to respect women and at the end real men don't buy girls thank you being only a primary school teacher with little to no income for herself how did she manage to open up this huge non-profit organization rescuing more than 50,000 lives and putting women in a safe place You ask, well, it's all her dedication and support that she's been getting for numerous people. When she started out, she was making a hundred dollars a month, which is very little comparing to how many women were being trafficked from Nepal to India. About ten to fifteen thousand women were being trafficked from Nepal to India a month, and this was a huge number. However, she decided to do something about it, so she created Mighty Nepal in 1993. 
women that she had caught that were trafficked from Nepal to India, she would bring them back to these places. These Maiti Nepal essentially stands for mother's house, which is a place of luxury and where they don't have to worry about anything. They can just relax and go back to their life as normal human beings rather than being tortured and beaten by these men when they got human trafficked. And for a lot of these women, they weren't allowed to go back to their houses either. Coming from a conservative third world country, a lot of families in Nepal didn't want to take these girls back from human trafficking because they saw them as unpure. Many of them were pregnant, many of them had HIV AIDS, and Anuradha Koirala decided to do something about it. With government assistance less than a dollar a month, not helping her out at all with this whole rescue efforts, she did everything on herself. They asked me to give shelter. And I thought nothing. I said, okay. And I rented two rooms and I took 10 children, girl child, and I started the shelter. But it was really very difficult, very difficult because, you know, I was a teacher and I had nothing with me nothing with me. And to feed them, clothe them, medicine, education was very difficult for me. But I did it. I went on doing it. I borrowed money from here and there, and I did it. But it, my friends told me that I have, if I registered an NGO, I could get support from somewhere. So I registered an NGO, and I called it Maiti. Maiti means mother's home for girls. So how did Anuradha Koirala, being a one-woman team, rescue all these girls? And how did she save 50,000 lives being just a one-woman team, we ask? Well, actually, she had a band of police officers and a volunteer team helping her out. So she would station herself with the police officers in the borders where these smugglers were smuggling girls in and out from the country to India to put them in brothels, where these women were treated poorly. They were abused sexually, physically, mentally. And so whenever each car would pass by, Anuradha Koirala, as well as the police officers, would stop these cars. They would open up the doors, and she herself would go talk to these ladies. And she would ask them, is this the life you want? To get brutally raped? To possibly get pregnant and have HIV AIDS? To get beaten? every day of your life. Then she would take these girls and she would put them back in Maiti Nepal, where she would then treat them for HIV AIDS, pregnancy, and any sort of psychological or mental physical disorders that they were dealing with. And the sad part about it all is that Nepal as a community did not accept these women with HIV AIDS. She even stated that when one girl died of HIV AIDS, the funeral cost was double the expense because people were being rude, demeaning, and the funeral costs were doubled. And Anuradha Koirala, although she was deeply saddened by this incident, she realized that it's not their fault. Maybe they just weren't given the proper education of HIV and AIDS. They just didn't know. So she started going from villages to villages, educating people about HIV AIDS, educating people about not giving their daughters away to people who came there and bribe them with money in hopes of a better future to keep their daughter safe. And Anuradha Koirala has done that and saved 50,000 lives by doing that, and she continues to do so. The, the stigma against HIV AIDS. Sridhana again was in India, in Kamathipur, for many years, eight years. And the Gharwali pushed her back after she was HIV positive. She arrived at Maithi, Nepal, but she could not live for a long time. She died of AIDS. I had to cremate her. I took her to Pashupatinath temple, and I wanted to do the last rites for her. The last rite cost only 850 rupees. But there, I was asked 8,000 rupees. And I argued with that man for a long time. Ultimately, he agreed to do the cremation for 2,000 rupees. I was really very sad. I said, even after that, the girls didn't get the rights. 
and we hear talk in this world about human rights, women rights, child rights, and all the rights of the world. And there, she did not get the rights even after death. However, it was not easy for Anuradha Koirala. No matter how many efforts she tried, these women were still scared. She often wanted these women to tell her where the brothels were so she could go there and rescue more girls. However, many of these women were scared and they were wired into being scared from authorities and not to trust the authorities by these madams and by these people that were exploiting them. So for a lot of the parts, although she did get a few women to tell them where the brothels were and she rescued many more girls from there, many of these girls were scared and scared of the authority and scared of Anuradha Koirala. And sometimes she even had people actually infiltrate these brothels and go in there as sex workers and their husbands would go in and catch these traffickers. I rescued a child called Puna. She was 13 years old when she was trafficked to Mumbai Kamatipur. She stayed there for four years. She went through physical and sexual torture and we brought her back to Nepal, there after, at Mighty Nepal, because of the psychological counseling, legal aid, education, she was able to put her trafficker behind the bars. So now I'm going to show you the impact that Anuradha Koyala has had on these girls. We may think it's just a simple rescue, but for these girls, it's a process of being born again. It's a brand new life from them, from a life of torture. So now I'm going to show you a video of a girl who was rescued by Anuradha Koirala and just how thankful she is. And I bet it won't stop the tears from flowing from your eyes. <laughs> in 2010, it was a big step for Anuradha Koirala when she won CNN Hero of the Year 2010. So let's see what Demi Moore had to say about Anuradha Koirala. Every day, this woman confronts the worst of what humanity has to offer. She says, stop, stop selling our girls. By raiding brothels and patrolling the India-Nepal border, she saves girls from being sold into the sex trade where they are repeatedly raped for profit, tortured, and enslaved. She has provided not only a shelter for these girls and young women, but she has created a home, a place for them to heal, to go to school, learn a skill, and for some who are infected with HIV AIDS, a place to spend their days where they're surrounded by love. This is why I admire our hero, Anuradha Korali. Anuradha Koirala has won 38 national and international awards for furthering children and women's rights. And some of these prestigious awards are as follows. She won Prabal Gorkha Dakshin Bahu Medal in Nepal 1999, Trishakti Patta Award 2002, Best Social Worker of the Year Award Nepal 1998, German Unifem Prize 2007, Queen Sophia Silver Medal Award 2007, The Peace Abbey, Courage of Conscience 2006, and CNN Hero 2010. The 2010 CNN Hero of the Year is Anuradha Koirala. <laughs> Thank you.
this is another responsibility to me to work and to really with all your support we have to end this heinous crime please join hands with me to end this crime anuradha koirala loves spending time with children and these women call her diju which means older sister and they treat her like a older sister because she treats each one of them as her own instead of looking at them with hateful eyes and judgmental eyes that many of the people were looking at them through she helps them and she helps them heal which is why these women love mighty nepal which is why they feel like it is their mother's home because they're living at a place where they're not being judged for their past they're being helped towards a better future we've seen children who have come back with you know broken legs with hiv positive when they are 14 13 which is very sad they are still child you see anuradha koirala is a living example of sacrifice dedication love and passion without her countless women would still be living in such poor conditions in brothel being abused sexually mentally every day of their lives but because of her these women have a new chance and a new opportunity to make their lives better as well as their kids if they were pregnant meanwhile and she continues to fight for these women and she does realize that this fight has just begun however she dreams of a nepal where no women are trafficked and there are no brothels left in india where women from nepal have been trafficked there so we have message for everyone so we are trying to educate all of them and say that trafficking is inhuman Just imagine what would happen if your daughter were standing there. What would you do? How would you fight? So you have to join hands. You have to take each child as your daughter. Soon you will feel their sorrow and soon you will have the strength to protect them. With these powerful words from Anuradha Koirala, I'm now signing off for this week. But I will be back next week with another amazing personality. who inspired all of us to change the world for the better of everyone until then keep inspiring and keep believing in yourself just imagine what would happen if your daughter was standing there and if your daughter was there what would you do how would you fight so you have to join hands you have to take each child as your daughter I want a society free of human trafficking. Uh, I I hope I will make it happen one day.